mistakes Give you blues Hope you don't feel taken Or think you've been used Cause it's alright Friday night to Sunday It feels alright Keeps your mind on the Hello, and welcome to Shut Up and Sit Down, a show all about board games and card games and all the other games you can play in your very own house. You're late. Yeah, well, they've increased patrols, so we have to go the long way around. Well, the resistance won't be stopped by a few extra patrols. Tonight goes ahead as planned. The guys change at midnight. And this is everything you're going to need. There's one more problem, guys. The resistance has been infiltrated by a spy. A spy? Why is this the first I'm hearing about a spy? Have you heard anything about a spy? Huh? What? A, a spy? No, no, I haven't heard anything about a, a, a <laughs> I don't even know what a spy is. I mean, you sort of, yeah, maybe no kind of the. But wow, what a concept! A spy, like among us, one of us, one of us, one of, yeah, was some. Look, uh, I've just for no reason, I've just got to go and make a phone call. I'm just gonna. So I'll. Uh, bye. The resistance, which comes in this tiny box, has a board but it's not a board game. It has a lot of cards, but it's not a card game. Really, the resistance is a party game. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean it has to be played while eating cake with a fork? No, all it means is that it's designed to entertain a group, a large group, in this case of up to 10 people, with very simple rules. It certainly doesn't mean it has to be nice. Just how simple is it? Well, let's say you're at one of my parties. Should've known better than a friend Wasted no, no, no. Try again. Wake from your sleep. No. <laughs> no, stop it. Just do it properly. Imagine you're at an actual party of mine and you've just gone to the fridge to get yourself a beer. What kind of a game, you ask? A game that imagines all of us as members of the same underground resistance unit, except some of us will be spies. Now the resistance members have to figure out who the spies are. The spies have to figure out how to sabotage missions without getting caught. It is incredible fun and a tiny bit dickish. You're a bit of a dick. You'd be quite good at it. That sounds okay, you say. Do we have to do anything crap, like acting or go on actual missions or anything? Because Millicent is here and I don't, I don't want to do anything crap in front of Millicent. Someone called Millicent here? Yes! Just look, shut up and sit down at the table. Come on, this is going to be awesome. My people! And then you'll sit down at a table that looks like this. Now at this point your friends may still have some reservations. That's fine, because the resistance starts with the perfect opening to get everybody involved. All you do, it's very simple, is deal out these cards here to everyone who's playing. They'll show those players whether they're an honourable, noble member of the resistance or whether they're a traitorous spy. Then you get everybody to close their eyes then you get everybody who is only the spies to open their eyes so that they see each other and they identify who's on their team. 
Everyone closes their eyes again. Everyone opens their eyes and all oh, the game's already underway. There's already a secret out there. It's already a little bit tantalizing, a little bit sexy. The point of the resistance is simply to go on missions. The resistance themselves will hope those missions are a success. That's what they want. The spies, the saboteurs, will attempt to undermine and sabotage those missions. The first side to score three points is the winner. And it's that simple. And it's also equally brutal. This is how it begins. A leader, perhaps the first leader will be the person who owns the game, will pick a team for the upcoming mission. Everyone else around the table will vote on whether they agree on that team. But remember at this point, we don't yet know who the spies are and who the genuine resistance members are. Based on that leadership vote, based on approval or disapproval from the people around the table, the mission either goes ahead or the leadership moves to somebody else entirely. And of course, the leadership may well move into or out of the hands of a spy. How do you determine whether a mission succeeds or fails? It's the simplest thing, and it's also the most brutal. Everyone who goes on the mission will be given these success and failure cards. They will submit these cards in secret to a pile in the middle of the table. Now, providing everybody on the mission submits these success cards, the mission's fine. However, if anybody on that team, on that mission, submits a fail card, the mission's a flop. It's gone wrong. Now it's a wonderfully simple dynamic, but of course it immediately produces all kinds of social problems. All kinds of psychological things going on. You told your friends this was a party game? It's not. It's a mind game. What have you done to your friends? Let's say you're the leader. You pick two other people around the table to go on a mission with you. The cards come back. One of them is a failure card. Now, you know one of those two people is a spy, but everybody else around the table is also going to be wondering if you're one too. It was your mission that just got screwed up. Or what if you are three spies and you happen to all be sent on the same mission together? Who submits the failure card? You can't all do it. Or if the cards are revealed and there are even two failure cards in there, no one's going to ever trust your bunch again. Your spy ring's been severely compromised. I love this game. The very first time I played, I was sent on a mission with just one other guy, and it was sabotaged. And it wasn't me that done it, so I knew it had to be him. Yet from that point on, nobody trusted either of us, even though I was clearly a heroic member of the resistance. And he was a dirty, lying scumbag! That's partially because his friends, the other spies around the table, were weaving this web of mistrust so thick that I couldn't even tell who was starting these rumours. But I was left with enough wiggle room that over the coming minutes and watching future outcomes of missions, I managed to win over the trust of just one other person. She saw my very real agony, and I genuinely believed she wasn't a spy. So, through basic maths and our instincts, over the rest of the game, we managed to figure out one other person who we didn't think was a spy, and we managed to engineer the situation so that the final mission, despite the best efforts of everybody else, or so it seemed, was me, her, and this other guy. And then, as I'm putting in my success card for the final mission, it dawns on me, Shit. How stupid am I? Have I been playing, being played for this entire thing? But it was too late. And so, everybody on the table watched as we flipped those final three cards, and they were a success, a success, and a success. Did you think I was going to say that she was a spy? Because that's what I thought. I was terrified out of my tiny pants that she was a spy. And that's what makes this game great. Despite coming in a box this small and only taking 25 minutes to play, there's more heat and excitement and light and fun packed into all of those small packages than in games with boxes ten times this size that take entire hours to play. The Resistance is just a mystery that keeps on giving. And ultimately, just like real life, you can never be sure what anybody really wants. If you'll excuse me for just one second. You're a spy! Great, what, You're a spy! Great, Jesus, you I'm are building. a spy! You're I'm a spy! Stop, stop talking! Do it! Do it! Go on, just say one more word!
Charity shops, they are everywhere. Like a strange and surprisingly affordable disease. But did you know that they're actually a fantastic place to find board games? People who have no idea of the value of what they've got. Quins, Quins, well, Quins, look. I'm look doing a piece of camera. Look, Irish Scrabble. See, a perfect example of a brilliant board game. And, Scrabble and, in Irish, and, original and rap. Look, look, Waddington's Air Charter. It's so old. Holy shit, look at that. That's actually quite cool. Copyright 1970. Paul, can you imagine really? what our ancestors would have made of this? Our ancestors? I can only guess. Sponsored by Stone's Original Green Ginger Wine. Oh, do come in. Ah, Mr. Paul D. Militon Masterton Mumford and... Uh, I'm sorry, what is your name again? Uh, can you not remember my name? Well, if you will have such a blasted name... I'm sorry. Oh, do come in. Ah, Mr. Paul Dean, have you come upon my home empty-handed? Hey, Mr. Quintintin Smythe. No, I have a new entertainment from Waddington Games. Ah, Waddington's Hair Charter. It sounds perfectly marvellous. Shall we play a game? <laughs> Only if you promise not to take all of my money again. Yes. Waddington's Hair Charter is a wholesome game of aviation competition with rules simple enough to be understood by the Hale family, including the ladies. With but a conservative roll of the die, the player may affect the motion of their flying machine across this colonial landscape, delivering food and primitive machinery to the backward foreigners of this region. I say, Paul, would you care for a glass of green ginger wine? Yes. Regrettably, one negative aspect of this entertainment product is its insistence on including this component, paper money. The repeated employment of this during play reminds one of handling food coupons. Okay, you know how over the 20th century humans have got better at designing planes and computers and cars and all that stuff? Well, we've also got better at designing board games. All the modern games you'll see myself and Paul talking about are designed to avoid poisonous ideas like one horse races, having to wait ages for your turn, or worst of all, roll and move. How about some of that green ginger wine? Yes. Yes! What? Oh, this could be good. There is no greater source of disagreement when playing a game than how to properly roll one's dice. So allow us to show you. First most, the dice one plays the game with must be agreed upon. Any gentleman gamers present are allowed to disallow any number of dice based on the 1905 Sandy Cock gambling standard. Each player is also allowed to disallow precisely one dice that they simply do not like the look of. In the event of games with custom dice where this would leave you unable to play the game, simply return the game to the shelf and play something else instead. Particularly within the Commonwealth regions, it has become common practice to roll dice upon the board. However, this is incorrect and inappropriate. However, some of you may also roll your die in a small container. This is also incorrect. Some of you may have your dice rolled at a distance of 12 feet or further, verified by an independent judicator or by a qualified servant, perhaps a butler. This is correct. 
The internationally recognized method for rolling one's die is the Higgs technique, in which the object is projected from the palm with both momentum and rotational force, but without any curvature. Let us examine a poor fellow rolling his die the wrong way. Now, let us see the correct employment of the Higgs technique. Oh, what? A power cut? But do you know what? This seeks quite nicely into our next review. This next game also screams, look how smart I am, look how smart I am, like the resistance, like a child who's eaten something he probably shouldn't have. But whether resistance is a social game, this one is logical. They say that with great power comes great responsibility. What they forgot to add is that with great power comes great fun. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Power Grid, the first generally accepted classic that Shut Up and Sit Down has taken a Paul! Would class, the first generally accepted classic that Shut Up and Sit Down Paul, what are you doing? Paul! Classic. Paul, what are you, would you, I'm gonna come down there in a minute. Classic that Shut Up and Sit Down has taken a closer look at. Paul? That's right. I was the spy. Power Grid is actually the reinterpretation of a very old German game called Funkenschlag, and that... Funkenschlag. And it's the very first classic that... Well, I thought you were downstairs. No. What? The first classic that Shut Up and Sit Down has taken a closer look at. Power Grid is a game where every player controls an energy company vying to provide electricity to an entire nation. It's a wonderfully satisfying game. It starts like this. Every player will first of all bid for power stations, through which they'll obviously provide their electricity, Secondly, they'll purchase resources, fuel to power those stations. And thirdly, they'll start putting little pieces across the board to represent the spread of their power network. And then, well then, the satisfying part really kicks in. You flip the switch and you get handed a massive wad of cash. It's, uh, it's a delightful mechanic, really. It's, thanks, thanks. Nice for doing, nice doing business. Doing business with... with Ah, oh, it's, 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 ah! Now, there are a lot of games out there about economy management that feature minimal player interaction. I can't stand that. Everybody runs their own little business, and then at the very end, you figure out who did the best. What Power Grid gets clever is that each of the three phases, the bidding for power plants, the buying fuel, and the claiming cities, see the players duking it out in three unique ways. First of all, check this out. The claiming of power plants. There's only ever a minimum of them on the market at any one time. And it's done by auction. So let's say I want this oil burning plant. I'll bid the minimum of nine. And that's... So I can't want it, so I'll probably bid 11. Twelve. Now, I don't know if he actually wants that or he's just bidding to make sure I pay more, which would be clever, but that's a dangerous game. Well, that looks like a good coal burning power station to me. I can take it or leave it. Yeah, very reliable. Um, 25, I'll bid 25. 26. Okay. You got it, enjoy. Oh no, Paul, no. Oh no, come on, no. Ah, oh, balls, no! Next up is the fuel, the resource track. This is the stuff you need, your opponents need this too. This is what's gonna power your power station. Let's have a look down here right now. Coal is very cheap, but this rubbish all the way up here, that costs eight. Man, that's some expensive rubbish like Cluedo. Now the problem arises when you compete because whoever's in last place will go first this time round. They choose to buy all this coal, they've driven up the cost of coal to four. That's made a big difference, it can even dictate the kind of plants that people want to buy and use subsequent turns. Hmm, uh, I think for now I'm going to buy some uranium. I think I'll buy some rubbish, it's still cheaper than uranium. 
And finally, we have the claiming of cities. And this, this is where the game is won and lost. Let me show you what I mean. Come on. Okay, the hook in this phase of the game is fencing in your opponents, claiming sections of land before they can and walling them in. Of course, this means at the beginning of the game you have a very tricky decision as to where to place your initial city, where to start your network. As you can see over here, red and yellow have already placed towns on the east because the connections are cheap over there. So maybe you place your city there. No, no, that would be stupid because red and yellow will wall you in. They'll squeeze you like a grapefruit. Maybe you could go over to the west. No, 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 that's a stupid idea. Look how expensive the connections are over there. You could, I mean, you could go to the north. Yeah, would that be it? No, wait, no, there's no, there's no cities over there. You'll just run out of space to expand. You'll be like a cow in an elevator. But you see what we mean, though. Every single phase of power grid gives you the chance to screw over your opponents, to ignite some damp pile of ill will that'll smolder for the rest of the game. <sighs> I'm not very good at power grid. I'm not sure I've ever actually won a game, but I do like buying garbage. That's what I like to do. I just buy garbage. And I think I'll buy some more uranium, I, I, I think. Uh, um, you know what, I hate to bring negativity to the table. I think Power is a very good game, but I don't think it's a good game for two players, whatever the box claims. When you have a two-player game, whoever starts off in the lead ends up in the lead. They become too powerful, they earn more money, and the game just turns into a, a richer guy beating up a poorer guy with a briefcase full of cash. Now, when we say Power Grid is a classic game, we mean, well, it really is classic. It's very well designed. It's cleverly put together. But that means, for the same reason that chess is a clever game, people who are better at the game are going to win most of the time. If you sit down to play a game of Power Grid and you ask yourself, hey, what's going to happen this time? I'm afraid the dude who knows the game best is probably going to hand your ass to you on a plate. Pretty much every time. The game is balanced so that good people win. That can put off casual gamers, it can put off people who want to sit down and not know what's going to happen. But I don't know, the game's good enough that I'm willing to keep learning, keep giving it a go, even if the learning curve is kind of tough. And you know what, it's another game with paper money and this really bugs me too and I, I'm, I'm sorry but it's such, it's such a tacky component. It's, it's almost ironic how the cheapest component in games like this always ends up being the one that's supposed to represent value. I mean look at this stuff, I want to... Ah, I want to buy some more uranium and I don't want to buy it with this, it feels like I'm purchasing everything with coupons. Are you still buying uranium? That's... Ah, oh, you stink. Are you buying garbage again? Are you giving off heat? I, 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 I don't oh, feel that, very well. That's not good for you. <coughs> oh my god. Ah. Oh, we have to get you to our hospital. Oh my god. Oh, I, no, that's not, that's your hand. Oh, we got it. Uh, no, it's, it's, you know what, I, 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 I'll be fine. I'll just let me get back into the... Oh, that's not going to save you! What's that? I just, well, no, well, uh, because chess, I mean, yeah, I mean, because of the, I mean, no, I mean, chess it's because just, not really well, us. It's not there's me no, or well, the I other, think. maybe if options, I don't know if there's other, because, because... <laughs> oh, well, there Actually, we go. I don't know if Irish Scrabble, no, re, uh, what, uh, why do you even have that? I don't know. Ooh. Ooh. Summoner Wars is a gorgeous little game that first saw the light of day in 2009 and it's kind of like a modern chess. 
it's played in a grid, it's mostly 1v1, and the objective is to kill your opponent's king, or in this case his summoner, and while defending your own. Where summoner wars differs from chess is that it's completely awesome, where chess is cold and calculating and kind of cruel, with high level play that's based around memorising the plays of grandmasters. Summoner wars is about reacting, it's hot, it's about heroics and gambling and danger and bravery, and it never lets you lose hope. The first thing you do on your turn is draw up to five cards from this, your draw pile. They might be walls you can put down, units you can summon from out of the ether and then place next to a wall, or they might be spells you can just fling at your opponent. The twist of Summoner Wars is that the fuel you use to summon units is this same deck, your draw pile. The last thing you do on a turn is choose how many cards out of your hand you're going to discard to put into your magic pile, and next turn that magic pile will fuel your engine of destruction. The thing is, that deck of yours is actually fairly small, and if you're going to keep drawing cards and discarding cards and drawing cards and discarding, you're going to burn through it twice as quickly as your opponent, and then what have you got left? Nothing. You're going to have to finish them off with whatever you've got left on the board, and that can be as difficult as trying to climb a wall with one hand down your pants. You've heard the phrase, the flame that burns twice as bright burns half as long. Well, that's Summoner Wars. And as you're burning through your deck, as you're choosing which cards to throw away every turn, the game is asking you, how brightly do you want to burn this turn? How brightly do you want to burn and how quickly do you want to die out? And your summoner, well, your summoner, they might be your king, but they're also your queen. They're probably the most powerful figure in your army. Do you send them into battle to help you out? Because that's risky. Another really good reason to play Summoner Wars is these, all the different decks, different races you can buy, little miniature expansions, and each race has its own deck, its own spells, its own units, its own strategy. Summoner Wars isn't just different each time you play a different race, it's different depending on which two races you pair off against each other, depending on the way their strategies mesh. Goblins overwhelm their opponents with incredible numbers. Dwarves hunker down behind the walls of their own territory. Jungle elves launch spears, summon giant cats at their opponents in a wall of flint and teeth. The cloaks are thieves and they steal cards from their opponents. And the Fallen Kingdom, well, they're undead. Their zombies can turn some of your units into some of theirs. Um, you should buy this game. Like lots of great two-player dueling games, it manages an incredible intensity, but unlike lots of them, it also remembers to be fun. Once you finish a game of Summoner Wars, which takes about 50 minutes, you just want to reset the board and play it again. But the best thing Summoner Wars has over these games is that you never lose hope. When you're losing, there's always that chance for you to claw it back. Look, I'm doomed here at this point. My summoner has a reaper, a zombie warrior, and this champion all zeroing in on him, flanking him, ready to murder him. I was chasing that summoner or this guy, but he escaped. And God, look, I only have two cards left in my draw pile. I basically have this turn and maybe the next one to finish the game. But look, if I move that defender there, and that spearman there, gotta get one shot at this. Okay, that defender's gonna attack the reaper. Oh, okay, yeah, that reaper's gone. And then I'll just, he goes into my magic pile. And that Spearman is just in range of the enemy summoner, Red Talus. Here we go, one shot. Oh! 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 Oh, that's the final kill. That's just, oh, I'm just gonna walk and, oh, hi, Death, how's it going? That was a nice game, but I'm just gonna, oh, in your, in your face! Oh, just in your face! In your face! Oh, in your face! In your face! <laughs> Balls! Ball! Oh God. Ball! Oh, we're alive! Life. We're alive! We're alive! We beat death! We beat death! This is incredible! We beat death! Oh, oh my God! Oh my God! This. We oh, have wait. to tweet like now. Come tweet! On. Tweet! Yeah. Tune in next time when we'll be playing Settlers of Catan. Ah, oh, you're right, Death. Settlers of Catan, eh? Well, I'll tell you what, why don't you get the tea on and uh, I'll just set up the game.
there. Alright. That's the end of my turn. So it's death, so I'm death. Do you wanna, do you wanna roll this? Okay, don't, don't roll on the table, just on the yeah, board. Yeah. You can move the rubber. I can pass you the rubber. Uh, oh no, would you? Death, look, death, you're making it. This. Uh, do you want to trade anything? Wait, he wants to trade something. I've got wood. He wants a clay. What? No, come on, you want. Yeah, you there we go, clay. there, there. That's, I'll just. No, ah, uh, ah. Uh, well, he's taking my card again. Is he? That's roll again, and you can just. Are you just yeah. are you just passing? Well, I, that's not, not on the oh, board. Oh, oh. What number do you want that to be? Is that you want to just like five? Is that okay? Five. Oh, you get some clay then. That's...